Hello, everyone. So today I'm going to discuss about poetry. So what is poetry? Poetry is writing that formulates a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience and language chosen and arranged to create a specific emotional response through meaning, sound, and rhythm. It is a type of writing that uses language to express imaginative and emotional qualities instead of or in addition to meaning. In other words, poetry is a form of creative writing that expresses a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience with words carefully chosen for their sound and for the images and ideas they suggest, not just because of their obvious meaning. So it is arranged in intentional separate lines, which sometimes ends in rhyme for the purpose of creating a particular emotional response through its layers of meaning, placement of words, sound, and rhythm. Poetry may be written as individual poems or included in other written forms as in dramatic poetry, hymns, or song lyrics. Elements of poetry. Voice or speaker and tone refers to the poet's implied attitude toward its subject. Tone is an abstraction we make from the details of a poem's language. It is the use of meter and rhyme, the inclusion of certain kinds of details, exclusion of other kinds, particular choices of words and sentence pattern of imagery and a figurative language. In short, tone has a great deal to do with meaning. Diction refers to word choice and is intimately related to imagery and figures of speech because a poet chooses a word to achieve a certain sensory, emotional, or intellectual effect. Choosing one word, for example, suggests something different than, say, walked around, shuffled, drifted, floated, etc. So for each word, suggests a different attitude, image, or connection. Imagery refers to a pattern of related details. When images form patterns of related details that convey an idea or feeling beyond what the images literally describe, we call them metaphorical or symbolic. For example, Images of light often convey knowledge and life, while images of darkness suggest ignorance or death. Figures of speech refer to special kinds of language use. It is when metaphors, simile, personification, and metonymy is used in poems. Figures of speech depend on word choice within a specific context. Saying, for example, my pen sings on paper is an example of personification because we have given a human quality to an object, but to achieve this effect, we had to choose the verb sings instead of something else. The result is also metaphorical because we use the verb to sing is usually not used when we talk about pens. Symbol and allegory is merely the widespread or extended use of metaphor. In other words, if we use a single metaphor to structure an entire form or story, we are in the realm of allegory. If the poet uses the uses a metaphor that has often been used in a particular way, then we are in the realm of symbolism. But symbolism also refers to any use of an object, person, or place that represents something beyond itself. The symbolic significance always depends on interpretation and therefore must be read in context. Syntax refers to word order. So the way a writer chooses words, arranges them in sentences and longer units of discourse, and exploits their significance relates to his or her style, which conveys more than the verbal identity of a writer. In fact, syntax reflects the way a writer sees the world. So while sound is important in narrative, it is especially important in poetry because of poetry's connection to song and dance. And sound has everything to do with syntax. So using harsh sounds to convey a harsh environment is particularly effective, as is the use of soft sounds to convey more delicate emotions or actions. So how sentences are arranged often determines how a sentence sounds. Rhythm in poetry involves sound patterning or patterning. So a lot of classical poetry conforms to a systematic regularity of rhythm, which is referred to as the poem's meter. This involves a combining of stressed and unstressed syllables to create a constant beat pattern that runs throughout the poem. Structure refers to how a poem is organized. There are set forms like sonnets, but also free forms which have no rules to follow and the choice of form can either enforce or contrast with a the theme. Structure and poetry. So an important method of analyzing a poem is to look at the stanza structure or style of a poem. Generally speaking, structure has to do with the overall organization of lines and are the conventional patterns of sound. Stanza are series or stanzas are series of lines grouped together and separated by an empty line 
from other stanzas. They are the equivalent of a paragraph in an essay. So one way to identify stanza is to count the number of lines. If it's two lines, we call it couplet, three lines for a third set. With rain for four lines, sing queen for five lines, sis tet for six lines, or it is sometimes called six sane, sip tet for seven lines, and octave for eight lines. A poem may or may not have a specific number of lines, rhyme scheme, and our metrical pattern, but it can still be labeled according to its form or style. So here are the three most common types of poems according to form. Lyric poetry is any poem with one speaker, not necessarily the poet, who expresses strong, strong thoughts and feelings. Most poems, especially modern ones, are lyric poems. Narrative poem. It is a poem that tells a story. Its structure and resembles the plot line of a story. For example, the introduction of conflict and characters, rising action, climax, and the dinoma. Descriptive poem. It is a poem that describes the world that surrounds the speaker. It uses elaborate imagery and adjectives. So while emotional, it is more outward focused than lyric poetry, which is more personal and introspective. So in a sense, almost all poems, whether they have consistent patterns of sound or structure or are free verse and are in three categories mentioned, or of course, they may be a combination, combination of two or three. So in the next slide, you will see some more types of poems that are subtypes of the three styles mentioned. Ode is usually a lyric poem of moderate length with a serious subject, an elevated style, and an elaborate stanza pattern. Elegy is a lyric poem that mourns the dead. It's not to be confused with eulogy. It can have a fairly formal style and sound similar to an ode. Sonnet. It is a lyric poem consisting of 14 lines, and in the English version, it's usually written in iambic pentameter. There are two basic kinds of sonnets, the Italian sonnet and the Shakespearean sonnet. Ballad is a narrative poem that has a musical rhythm and can be sung. A ballad is usually organized into quatrains or sinquains, has a simple rhythm structure, and tells the tales of ordinary people. Epic is a long narrative poem that is elevated style recounting the deeds of a legendary or historical hero. Other types of poems include haiku, has an unrhymed verse from having a fast and unrhymed verse form having three lines at her set and usually, usually five, seven, five syllables, respectively. It's usually considered a lyric poem. The Merrick, on the other hand, has a very structured poem, usually humorous and composed of five lines, as in Queen, in an AABBA rhyming pattern. Beat must be an anabestic, which is weak, weak, strong. It's usually an narrative poem based upon a short and often revolved anecdote. Poetry's purpose is to enable us to see the world with fresh eyes again, like those of a child. So in doing this, it helps us to understand our world in a deeper way. That would be all. Thank you for listening.